Hog. And I'm here with Mary and Mark, and I'm very excited about that. We're in the courtyard of a famous house in the quarter in New Orleans. We're here for the Saints and Sinners Literary Festival, and um, I'm really excited to get to know you today. So I hear you're working on a new book. Yes. And tell me, tell me what you It's a follow-up book because I don't really like the word sequel. after um, a hate crime took place, which actually took place uh, just not too far from Bradley, yet during that time. And the characters reacted at that time, which was a, a very uh, infantile uh, political organization, uh, triangle organization, and uh, a task force sure. were in their infancy. And so the community had to come together and really fight. The love story takes place in and around that, and so it's not dwelling on the hate crime, but now this book, what I wanted to do was pick up those characters in a much different environment, with uh, very strong political organizations with a lot of voice and a lot of power, and now how are they dealing with the fact that this man, they did put him against for the hate crime, is now possibly getting out of prison without a short short sentence because it's ill. So now we're dealing with how do you react to this? Have you been apathetic um, for years now because organizations are picked up because you are now thinking, did I not get involved when I should have? Now do I need to get back involved again? Uh, and of course the main character has been tortured for the second time um, for a number of other reasons. These are the best we're trying to get all of it. So now she's lost her love, she's almost lost her business, she's an alcoholic mess, and, and, and now she's You have no conflict like this. in this book at all. No, the <laughs> thing is, she's been through one hell of a ring of fire, and you know, so now she's, we're trying to get her through this. And so this book is dealing with primarily her struggle and how the community is reacting around her. So I'm very interested in this subject. I'm about to do a follow-up book of my own, and um, and it's because it's a character that I was very interested in that was a secondary character. Right. And so tell me about what was the inspiration for you going back to this story and looking at it in a different way. Yeah, partly because I've, I've been involved with a lot of these um, little groups of people that during that time we were just now speaking out. And we were just getting brave enough to speak out and to find our political voice and, and to put a name to those crimes. Okay? And, and, Within all of this is our, we're trying to have you know regular lives. We're trying to have jobs. We're trying to have a lover. We're trying to keep it quiet, but come out, but not come out in our jobs. And so all these things were happening. And, and as we've grown as a community, and as our, our possibilities have grown, um, a lot of us, myself included, has gotten kind of apathetic you know, to, to the whole, you know, the passionate cause and everything. And we've kind of gotten to the point things are being taken care of, so I wanted to visit uh, one of those characters, and, and the best character to visit was this really strong, uh, very opinionated much who is just not going to stand, I mean she has her own way of uh, showing her passion, and, and it's almost to her own detriment. So I thought, well, I would just be better to, you know, put her over the top a little bit, and put her through a little mess and see what happens, because, I, I knew that I wasn't that bad myself, and I knew that the friends I had quite that affected, but you know, this would be great to pick out a character like that. And I loved writing her in the beginning, but she didn't have a whole lot of space. So now, I'll give her some space and see what she does. Sounds so very intriguing. Well, thank you. Excited about reading that. When can we expect that? Uh, March of, 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 of 11. Oh, well, that's going to be here before you know. So, yeah. Well, <laughs> sorry, this is you're been, not finished writing. I'm well, sorry. No, I have it. And, and <laughs> what's sad is that, that really I did, I lost a very close friend uh, while I was trying to write this. And so, by doing that, it, it put me in the characters. Interesting. Uh, put her yeah. in that same kind of struggle. And, and so, it was hard for me to come into her head. Of so I, did, I had to put some distance there. I had to, you know, get back away from it. And by the time I, you know, got back to 
point where I could really go to those places. Because it was so different. Then I had to make sure that the, that the emotion was the right emotion for that character, not my own emotion necessarily. So it's been, it's it's been a ride. Yet. It's not done yet. Yeah, I understand. So we'll see. We'll be done by then. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll hope so. Thank you. I'm a big fan of yours. Well, so thank you so much. It's a pleasure to meet you, and I know a lot of our viewers are big fans of yours. So thank you very much. And, um, this and, is we have, and we have a panel coming up. Yeah, we do. Yeah, on yeah, Sunday, if you're in New Orleans or nearby, on Sunday, 1 o'clock, um, don't write a bad romance. That's what we're going to be talking about. And feel free to join us at the Bourbon Orleans. And uh, very nice to meet you. This is Carson Tate's Video Log, signing out.